Okay, I woke up this morning sick, stuffy nose, sore throat. It hurt to talk. But I'm doing a little bit better. <coughs> and I really hope you can't hear how sick I am in my voice. But we're going to get on with the video. So, roll that intro. What I miss. Hey, what's going on guys? Jerry Bear here, and today we are back with another reaction. Now this video is being the best slash worst ever from Jaden Animations. The queen of animations. So we're gonna see what she means by this. So let's get her headphones on and let's get talking. Watching, not talking. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Sounds kind of weird. But yeah, all right. In three, two, one, let's react. Man, I'll never be able to throw a baseball like Ruth. He's got so much more skill and Baby talent Ruth? than me. It's like he was born to be a pitcher. If I could throw like him, I'd be so happy. I'll never be able to throw like Mason. Self-improvement really? seems like a simple concept. And what I've been learning the more I look into it is that no, it's not. It's all over the place and everyone has some sort of struggle with it at one point or another and it can be a nightmare. It's like falling from a tree. There's so many different branches you can get smacked by. Then I want to talk about it. Self-improvement <laughs> is extremely important to me. Out of all the personal values I stand by, it's the one I actively think about the most. Multiple times a day, I'll end up having some sort of checkup with myself to analyze if I'm doing enough to satisfy my self-growth quota. What, what can, can I, change I change to do better? Am I pushing myself? Mm, this isn't good enough yet. Why does everything I do look like shit? And that's the thought pattern I and a lot of people can start to spiral into. The concept of uh, self-improvement is really positive and inspiring. Keep on working to on develop one. yourself and you'll become a better person you could ever dream of. You can do anything you set your mind to. Go get him, tiger. Yeah, woo! That sounds great. Except, there's also this one complication where some people start having unrealistic expectations and an unhealthy mindset, and when they disappoint themselves after their inevitable failure to reach their unrealistic goal, it cuts them so deeply that it impacts their self-worth right to the core of their being. Ooh. I struggled with that one a lot. The, I can never be satisfied with what I'm doing and don't think I deserve any recognition branch. Just a bad case of imposter syndrome, pretty much. I'd explain what that is, but I don't think I'm qualified enough to do that. There are much better YouTubers than me who are much more deserving of my position, and I don't think I'm worthy of people paying attention to what I say because my content isn't good enough. And, oh, oh. Oh, okay. I really want to be able to play this really intense piano song because I've never done anything at that difficulty before. And I'm gonna push myself out of my comfort level. Huh. Well, it must have been actually too easy. I mean, it's not that great of an achievement. There's much better out there. Man, I suck! No, you practiced for weeks! You earned this! You should be able to be like, Yeah, you know what? I'm freaking great, and I deserve to feel at least a sliver of satisfaction for myself here. You idiot! When you're constantly looking for the next bar to hit, you can blind yourself to how far you've come. It's alright, you can actually be proud of yourself without being a socioph- cocky douchebag. Since I value <coughs> it so much, any sense of satisfaction with something would make me worry that oh, I was settling and Jake I Paul. wouldn't push myself anymore. Oh my gosh. Hindsight is 2020, and I'm able to see how actually super toxic and damaging that thought process was. I wasn't pushing myself out of passion like I thought I was. It was all just a disguise. Let's see who the culprit really was. What? Oh no! It was actually pushing myself too hard out of blind fear of becoming complacent. I got jinkied. Self-improving also pertains to self-help. You can't grow as a person when you're holding a whip to yourself. Can you whip yourself? 
I looked it yes. up and ended up on a page I didn't want. But the analogy stands. You know that Spongebob episode where Spongebob was like verbally abusing his snail and then it ends up exploding? Hmm. Yeah. This is your brain on negativity. Any questions? A big trip up can also be comparing yourself to other people. There's definitely positive aspects of being inspired by people you look up to, but like most things, too much of anything can be bad. There's always going to be people of a higher skill set than you, so you should try to identify who you are, not who to compare yourself to. I won't be exactly like Bo. He's super great, and funny, and really smart, but I'm not Bo. I'm such a failure. If everyone compared their skill sets to each other in order to calculate how much skill and potential they have, then all infant children should just give up on everything. You think time and practice is gonna help you improve your drawing ability, baby? Well, think yeah. again. You suck right now, so you might as well just throw in the towel, you pathetic little waste of diapers. Look at your drawing compared to Van Gogh. You call those sunflowers? Psh. This scribbled mess shows no potential of improvement in the art field. And you've even got more ears than well, you. Well, nowadays, you have, like, maybe. Seven ears actually, and still yeah. not be capable of creating a fraction of surprised. anything that could be considered art. You're nothing. Nothing! Everyone's on their own timeline. Even if someone is the same age or maybe even younger than you, it's still not okay to compare how much further they are to you. Jeremiah was able to hopscotch to number 8 when he was 5. I'm 21 and still get tripped up at the 5 and 6 combo. It's alright! Everyone's got different variables pushing them forward and backwards. Jeremiah has four legs, and you've only got one! You'll get there with enough practice, champ. You've also got to think about why you want to improve something. Is it for yourself, or because you think that's what other people want from you? If you make choices based on what others want, then oops! You played yourself. All of a sudden, in three years, you're hit with the realization that you don't know who you are, and you're just a living amalgamation of other people's expectations. Zoinks. When I was nine, I had a friend who said her favorite color was blue, so I said Same. my favorite color was blue too because I wanted her I to like blue. me and love you with something in common. Real critical nine-year-old thinking there. For years, I kept with that pattern of becoming a person I thought other people would like and saying my favorite color was blue because people who like purple are freaks! Until one year in high school, I suddenly had an identity crisis and a whole mental breakdown being like, I don't know who I am anymore. All my personality traits are based on things I've modified for other people. My favorite color isn't even blue! We ended up painting my bedroom walls from blue to white because of that meltdown. Don't paint your walls a color based on lies from when you were nine. Let's flip the coin and talk about the other side of the improvement spectrum. As much as people can attach their self-worth to their failures or shortcomings, which is not good and you should not do that. The same can be applied to earning achievements. It's not uncommon for people to improve, experience success, and then not feel the need to push themselves any further, which can melt into them being so absorbed in their accomplishments that they attribute it to their self-worth, becoming arrogant and a sociopath douchebag. Jaden, this is getting confusing. Are we supposed to be proud of ourselves or not? No, yes, be proud of yourself, but don't get too caught up in, uh, it's okay. <laughs> Ugh. All this stuff gets so tricky, uh, and I swear we're all just definitely gonna get hit by a meteor and perish. Yeah, you should be proud of your achievements and improvements, but it's dangerous to link them or anything to your self-worth or personality, because that's how you either think you're as worthless as a speck of dust, or brainwash yourself into thinking you're the reincarnation of God. <coughs> Oh. Just don't let your success slash failure meter affect your personal behavior meter, and it'll be fine. I've asked a bunch of my friends on their opinion on what to do in situations when you've gone off the deep end and think you're all that in a bag of success chips, and we all agreed it just comes down to self-awareness. When you're surrounded in a mist of your own success and so high up on a horse that you can't hear the echoes of reality, the only person that can make a difference is your own reality check and desires to change. There's also a tendency for successful people to be surrounded by yes men and people who will always agree with everything. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. You're so mm -hmm. smart. God, she's always right. So it can be really difficult to get that window of clarity where you can actually see the consequences of who you've become. And don't get me started on how seeing criticism gets. I think you could move the eyes down more. They're a bit... 
You're just a hater, and I don't need you in my life. There are different methods to improvement too. You can be actively seeking to learn more and mindfully decipher what you need to do to grow, or you can just do your thing and over time keep on perfecting your skill. There's a lot that goes into self-improvement. It's a whole balancing act of understanding what you want and not taking things personally and staying humble and not getting hit by meteors. But believe it or not, with a lot of time and figuring yourself out, it's very manageable and can become one of the strongest tools you can use to become a really balanced, awesome, humble, incredible, super cool person like me. Oh my gosh. Hey, thanks for being here. The end of the video, I mean, not alive. Well, like, it's good that you're alive, but I'm not particularly thanking you for that. But good job anyway. Hope you liked the video. We put a lot of effort into it. Alright. <clears throat> Jeez, that's what I sound like? Okay, um... <sighs> okay, I was kind of like her in elementary school. I kind of used to agree with anybody, with anything, just to get them to like me. And that was... <laughs> I just, like, ended up, like... A mirror or like a reflection of what they are you know and yeah I was totally not myself in <laughs> when I was little now I tend not to care as much as what people think of me and I just try to be myself as much like as much as I can <sighs> I am so not feeling great <laughs> oh all right all right oh by the way with uh, whipping yourself I've done that multiple times. Uh, <laughs> let me let me show you. I uh, got me a whip, and yeah, started messing around with it. Uh, blasted away my eardrums with the uh, sound, and ended up hitting my arm, my back, my head. I think there was my ear one time, and that's when I couldn't hear for about like what, almost a minute straight, and I got scared. <laughs> I know it's just a minute, but it felt so long of not hearing anything. So yeah, be careful. These are not a toy, okay? Don't don't be like me. Uh, anyway, all right, no more tangents. Uh, <clears throat> if you guys want to see the original video, I'll leave a link in the description down below. As always, uh, is that everything? Uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, see you guys in the next video, and hope I get better. So, yeah. Later.